Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. This is actually my very final June quarter Penix 4C video for companies that did achieve an operational cash flow positive quarter. And the reason I wanted to do a standalone video on this company is because what's transpired over the past few weeks, this company has completely destroyed their shareholders' wealth by doing an outrageous capital raising. So I want to discuss that capital raising in this video and to show you how destructive debt can be for a small cap company. Threat Protect is a company I've been following a little bit more closely than I probably should have been. And the main reason I've been following this company is just the amount of debt they had for a company with a very low markup. So I'll talk about that in the next slide. But however, this company is all about security monitoring. So if you have a security system at home, potentially Threat Protect is a company that is monitoring your security system. Founded in 1993, they listed on the ASX in 1994. Current CEO is John Hallam. He's been the CEO for about three months. The largest shareholder is Black Crane Capital, 13% stake. There is potential that uh, state could increase quite substantially, and I'll talk about that in the next few slides. Now, the market cap current, well, the market cap currently is about $5 million. Actually, it could be even less than that, but this company is doing a substantial capital raising, and after the capital raising, the market cap of Threat Protect will be $33.3 million at 0.5 cents, although the share price will be significantly higher than that because they're going to do a significant share consolidation. The ticket for this company is TPS currently, but it's also going to change because they are changing their name, which makes sense because they want to get that uh, bad taste out of shareholders' mouths and change their name to something else so we don't think badly about this company. There are some good things to like about Threat Protect uh, when it comes to their financials. So this is their financial data for the financial year 21. Revenue 25.5 million, gross margins 41%, uh, and operational cash flow positive 2.5 million. Unfortunately, they were unprofitable, lost $16 million, and after the capital raising, they will have $19.5 million of debt. Before the capital raising, they had over $50 million of debt, and that $50 million of debt was a significant burden to this company. And the enterprise value after the capital raising will be about $53 million, which is a very similar to what it was before the capital raising. Now, the whole reason I'm doing this video is because Threat Protect were operational cash flow positive for the June quarter. It's only a small amount, but it was 259000 They also received $6.7 million in cash receipts from customers. So this is a real business. But the big thing here is they also had to pay $660,000 in interest and other costs of finance paid. And the main reason they had to pay that amount of interest is because of the debt they have. And if we go to section seven of the Appendix 4C, we can see what their facilities are and what the interest they have to pay on the debt or the facility. So let's have a look at section seven right now. I always like to have a look at section seven of an Appendix 4C because in this section, we can see the amount of debt a company might have on their books and also the interest rates they are paying on these facilities. For Threat Protect at the end of the June quarter, they had $51.1 million of debt. And some of the interest they were paying on that debt were 10.6%, 6.5%, and 5%. So not the highest interest rates I have seen for uh, small cap companies. In fact, some of the interest rates I have seen are approaching 20%. So even though we are in a low interest rate environment, some of these small cap companies to get funding have to pay really high interest rates because there is a much greater risk to the long-term survivability of these sort of companies. I've already mentioned they are going through or will be going through a name change soon. And I was a little bit cynical. The whole reason they're going through the name change is because they just want to get rid of, of the name Threat Protect and the TICO TPS because of the complete destruction they've done to shareholder wealth. So the new name of Threat Protect will be Intelligent Monitoring Group Limited. 
and the TIG code will be IMB. So look out for that in the next few months. I'm not sure exactly when this is going to happen. They probably have to do some sort of meeting to get shareholder approval. I'm not sure when that meeting is going to be, but it's going to happen in the next few months more than likely. When we look at the receipts history for Threat Protect, there were some things to like about this company, particularly from um, 2015 all the way up to 2020, receipts were growing through time. That's one of the reasons I also became interested in this company. In fact, receipts grew from 1.2 million in the September quarter 2015 to a high of 7.7 .7 million in the March quarter 2020. Potentially, COVID-19 did have an effect on the business of Thread Protect because ever since that high of $7.7 .7 million of receipts, things have gone backwards for the company and receipts have fallen. And that's had an effect on the share price of Threat Protect and also the business model of the company. I think management were expecting the receipts to grow and the operational cash flow to grow as well. And if they became more operational cash flow positive, they would be able to serve their or service their debt better than what they've been able to do over the past few years. Now we get to the couple of raising that Threat Protect did announce to the market towards the end of September. This was a necessity, in my opinion, to get rid of some of that debt. But even though it was a necessity, some of the particulars around this couple of raising are horrifying. They decided to raise $32 million. Now, they decided to raise that amount of money at 0.5 cents. When they announced this couple of raising, the share price was 2 cents. So that's a 75% discount to the share price. And of course, when the shares in Threat Protect started trading again after they announced this couple raising, they immediately fell from two cents to 0.5 cents. Not only that, to raise $32 million at 0.5 cents, they needed to issue 6.65 billion shares. Now, to put that in perspective, the amount of shares on issue at the time they announced this couple raising was only 241 million. So this was a significant share dilution to current shareholders. I uh, can't believe the amount of dilution that is. That's a significant share dilution. And because he, they've decided to issue so many shares, they've also decided to do a 100 for one share consolidation. So after the share consolidation, the amount of shares on issue will fall from 6.65 billion to 66.5 million. Now on to the new capital structure for Threat Protect. Maybe I should start calling them Intelligent Monitoring Group. We have a current and a pro forma. So the pro forma is what you would see after the capital raising. Share price when they announced this capital raising was two cents, which meant the capital is, the market cap was 4.8 million. They had $53.7 million of debt. $1.8 million of cash, so the net debt was 51.8, which means the enterprise value was 56.7 million. After the capital raising, at a share price of 0.5 cents, the market cap would be 33.3 million, but they would have $9.3 million of cash, $28.8 million of debt, which means the net debt has fallen from 51.8 million to 19.5 million. But the most interesting thing here is the enterprise value hasn't changed all that much. It's only decreased from 56.7 million to 52.7 million. But the most important thing here is a significant reduction in leverage and absolute cost of funding. So there's a better chance that this company is going to survive in the future. So it's not an absolute, it will survive, but I think it has a better chance of doing that a more fighting chance, we'll say. Always good to read some of the key risk moving forward. And the first risk they mentioned was a potential for significant dilution. And this is a no-brainer because they're increasing the amount of shares on issue from 241 million to 6.6 .6 billion. And that's the very definition of significant dilution. They also mentioned a significant risk or key risk is control risk in regards to Black Crane who before the capital raising had 13% stake in the company, and there is a potential after the capital raising has been completed, they might have a 57.6% um, stake in the company, which means they will have absolute control in everything that Threat Protect or Intelligent Monitoring Group does 
in the future. They also mention there is potential for additional requirements for capital, which also means another potential capital raising in the future for the company. Always like to know why a company decides to do such a highly dilutive capital raising. And thankfully, in section 4.5 of the prospectus, um, they tell us why they had to do this capital raising. And it's all about uh, two important aspects. The first one is the earnings performance. Remember, receipts were going up until uh, the start of COVID-19. And ever since the start of COVID-19, receipts started to fall. That's one aspect. They also blamed COVID-19 for that. The other aspect is because of the debt. When investors like me see a company like ThreatProtect uh, have significant debt, they're much more reluctant to buy into that company. And when you have the debt and the decreasing receipts, we saw the share price under significant pressure and had been falling uh, considerably over a 24-month period. And because of all those reasons, they needed to do a capital raising to really decrease that debt to make this company a little bit more attractive to investors like me. Hopefully in this video, I have shown you how debt, particularly a high level debt uh, for a small cap company can completely destroy shareholders' wealth. This is a great example of that. So whenever I look at Appendix 4C or do any research on a company, I will always look at the debt levels and hopefully the debt levels are manageable. When I ever see a company with a high level of debt like Threat Protect have, I always stay well clear of owning those company shares. If you do have any questions about Threat Protect or any other company like Threat Protect, leave it in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.